I had a customer send me a drawing file that he has uh, that he, he's working on some uh, garage storage cabinets uh, for his shop. It's one of the first products he's going to be cutting with the smart bench. Um, he was using a couple different, playing with a couple different CAD products and 3D modeling products, and we're bringing the drawings into VCarve Pro. So uh, this is what he sent me, and he's already got it tool pathed and everything. Everything looks good here if we turn on all the tool pathing. It's got too many step downs here, I think, in the if we're using a quarter inch tool. He's got seven passes, and I, I will go through all the changes. But what I wanted to show was um, what he was doing. So he's he's doing a a perimeter cutout. You can see the cutout there. He's got a dado for I'm assuming some fixed some slide in shelves. I'm not entirely sure what these cutouts are, but he wants them to be able to be square. And because of the radius of the bit coming into a squared off area, we need to do the dog bones. And there's a couple different ways to do the dog bones. So let's look at those. So we're going to go back to the design end of it. There are um, gadgets that do it. I typically do it manually. It doesn't take but a few seconds to do, uh, but I like to have control over them. So what we're going to do is use the fillet tool here. We're going to click this and then I'm just going to put in a, a value. Uh, this is the radius. I'm going to say uh, the, 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 the gap here is one inch. It's 25.4 millimeter. He does design in metric. You can design in imperial or metric. It doesn't matter in, in V-Carve. Um, he, he's got this drawing done in millimeters. So I'm going to say I'm, uh, three and a half millimeters. It'll be a, a seven millimeter diameter uh, dog bone. Now, a normal fillet would be this, and it would you know, radius the corners, which is the look of what it's going to do with his uh, quarter inch bit. So that's 6.3 or, um, but I'm going to do a bigger, I'm going to click them again to square them back out. Whoop, there we are. Come on. Not sure why it's not finding that one. Okay, I'm going to do Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. So Control Z is the same as Edit Undo, and so we're back to a square uh, corner as he designed it. Now there's a couple different shapes you can do. Uh, you can do a dog bone fillet, which makes them wider than the um, initial cut coming in. So depending on your setup, you could see these. Uh, they could be more visible from the side. Um, or from the face looking at them. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is a T-bone fillet, and I'm using the same shape. And we'll do that here and here. And these go on the end of the on the end of the uh, indentation and extend further in. So I'm putting a squared off piece in, it'll come right in here and there'll be a little gap and a little airspace here, but I have a nice tight fit here. So if I'm screwing them in, I have a nice landing area for the back side of the piece and things like that. Uh, so those are your two options and it's real quick once you decide which one you want to use uh, to go in and, and modify them. So I'm going to change these, I'm going to click them to bring them back to the normal setup and then I'm still going to do the T-bone setup and I'll pick the other side of that joint. And I'll do that here as well. And zoom in and click, click. And again, that could go on either side of that joint. So I want to make sure I have it on the right, on the proper side. So you get the idea. Uh, so it's very quick. There is a gadget that you can uh, use here from the gadget library, uh, and that will kind of select them automatically. Uh, I just, there's some cases where I may want to flip these and have it be the other design, the dog bone design, rather than the T-bone type design. Um, but that's it. We're good to go. I'll probably do this one too. And that should all fit in properly. Uh, so now we go back in and recalculate the perimeter, the outline. Um, and I'm just going to continue this review. Uh, one of he's he's given me great feedback on some of my videos. He says I incorporate too many things and I'm doing it again. So uh, rather than eight passes, I would change the number of passes to four or five. I mean, it can I typically cut the diameter of the bit if the bit is is sharp uh, at speed. Um, there are some feeds and speeds that are being sent out by uh, the guys at the at the at the plant and support, and they've got it taking a less aggressive cut. 
depends on your material, your speed, speed through the material, and how sharp your bits are and what type of bit. So I'm going to say we're going to do this in five passes. We could probably do it in three, but that's okay. I'm just going to leave it that way. Uh, he's doing an allowance offset of 0.2 millimeters, uh, so he's going bigger than that and then coming back in and cleaning it. Uh, and he, he could do the same thing here with a, a separate last pass where it, it overcuts it a little bit and then comes back in, and that way you wouldn't have the witness lines when you have you know five different distinct passes with a quarter-inch shank bit because the bit can flex a little bit. So you could overcut it 20 thousandths or something or metric equivalent, one millimeter, whatever you wanted to do. Um, so you could overcut it a bit, and then on the last pass it comes in, and that way the entire bit cuts and and kills the witness lines from having multiple passes coming through. So that's what I would turn that on um, for sure. Uh, don't necessarily need to do tabs depending on how he's holding down his parts. He may want to. I would add ramps uh, roughly, you know, uh, they say two or three times the diameter of the bit. So I'd, I'd say this is a quarter inch bit I think he was using. So I'd say uh, 25 millimeters over an inch or a half inch. And that's great. And we re recalculate it and it flips it down. And now it's less passes. So that looked good. He was using multiple tools to come through and, and hog this out. Um, I don't even know that I would have to use the eighth inch bit. I would just let it run with the quarter, but that's fine. Uh, again, he's, he's playing with and learning the machine. And so then this is the smaller tool when it passes through. And then he's got a hole up here. I'm not sure what that is, unless it's a lock bar. I, I don't know. Um, and again, he's got that coming in first with the quarter inch tool and then an eighth inch tool. Um, so we will let that go. I, I don't have the full concept of, of the cabinet that he's making, uh, but the idea was uh, to kind of get a quick look at what he was doing, make suggestions, and show him how to do this, this filleting so that you can put a squared or a rectangular piece into a joint that's cut with a bit, with a round bit. Again, because typically you would have a radius hole when the, ra when the bit comes in and, and made that direction change. So, hope that clears everything up. Um, he, he mentioned, I should mention, that I sell VCarve Pro. Uh, so, if, if you're, you need to buy a copy of VCarve Pro, uh, you can contact me through the website and I'm happy to provide it with you. I do provide a couple hours of training and review your drawings and stuff as you're getting used to it and of the machine and, and need to you know, have somebody check your work. I'm happy to do it. Um, if you order direct from VCarve, um, your support would be from VCarve as well. And uh, there's a little bit of margin in it for me and I'm happy to, happy to swap that over to support time with my customers. So thank you very much. That's Eric Schiller with Yeti Tools Southeast, yetismartbench.com. You can go to the yetismartbench.com slash contact page, fill in the contact page, and I can answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm doing exactly what he told me not to do. Uh, I wanted to the, I'm not sure why um, he was doing this secondary pass with the, um, I'll flip over why he was doing his clear out passes for his dados with a quarter inch tool and then an eighth inch. I'm assuming he's trying to uh, square up these corners here of, of the dado. So he's got a, a larger tool and then a, do, doing a tool change and doing the secondary tool. And I think there's a way that we can get away from that. So uh, what I would do uh, is I'd go back to your original drawing, back to the design mode, and I selected I, this outside perimeter line. I hit the right button. And I moved it to a new layer that I created. I just went to new layer and I typed it in EJS perimeter because I wanted him to, if I send this file back and forth with him, I want him to see what I've done as opposed to the layers that he did. So I moved it to a, the perimeter called EJS perimeter. And then I can come to my layers and turn off that perimeter. So now I can come in here easily and do the same thing on these. And I can still use a quarter inch cutter, which is six point whatever, in millimeters, uh, and I can come back in and use that same fillet design with the T-bones. I'm doing three and a half, so it's going to come, it's got plenty of room to get in there and, and get cleaned up and put these on both sides of the dados. I grabbed that one wrong and be there. Oop. Turn that off and be here and be here. 
again, this is very definable. You can put it on wherever, whichever side of the, this that you want. So I'd put them on both sides of the data and, and use them with the uh, quarter inch tool so it can get, get in and get out. And that will clean that up. And if I turn on my other perimeter cut, see how they're coming past it? So that would leave a nice squared out, perfectly clean dado for this. So let's, if we come back in and reprocess it, I'm just going to recalculate everything. And it warns me that it's cutting through, yes. And then on these, okay, so I don't have the datos. Oh, I basically, I would clear this out and reselect that data. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to modify his stuff. I'm going to delete that toolpath. And delete that one. I'll leave his whole ones, but then I'm going to do a new one. I'm going to pocket that out and select this one. Well, it's got all of them, so that's cool. Uh, and just use the bigger tool. I don't want it to be that eighth inch tool. I want to remove that and I want to select uh, in mine just a quarter inch end mill. Uh, so that will be able to get into my uh, 3.5 millimeter pocket or shelves. I like to name mine with longer naming conventions. Reset and then preview all. And now that shows that it's going to be going all the way through uh, because by the time this perimeter cut is made, it's going to cut that extra part going out away. So um, that way you can eliminate having the multiple tool paths. Let me uh, close this, and I don't know how deep he did that uh, in millimeters. I'm going to go seven millimeters deep. Again, I don't know what he had. I didn't look. So we'll recalculate that. And you do see that it's doing that extra work there to clean the corners. We'll reset the preview and preview all. And then now you have the nice deep dado in one pass with no tool changes. It's, it's not one pass necessarily, depending on how deep you had it doing your step down. Uh, but we're not having to change tools in order to clean out those corners. So, again, a lot of information in this video, uh, but if you hung with it, I am going to try to do a better job in labeling them uh, and, you know, showing what I'm doing at different times in the video so you can jump to them. I don't want to be a video guy. That's not my goal. My goal is to help teach, and the videos seem to be the easiest way to to help multiple people with the same questions and let you move down this path of learning software and integrating it with the Yeti SmartBench. So thanks again for watching. YetiSmartBench.com.